<laughs> okay, so my name is Renal Fantunde. I'm an indie sci-fi author from South Africa. Um, I don't actually know what else to say. <laughs> I know, like, I was just, yeah, we were talking earlier, Naz and I, and, um, yeah, you're from South Africa. That's like, it's to us, that's like insane. Like, we, we don't really know that much about South Africa. Like, <laughs> well, all we see is just the stuff, you know, um, in movies or TV shows and like uh, District Nine. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just like, man, this is like <laughs> There are a lot of areas like that, but it's, you know, when we live, we live in Joburg, so um, it's pretty much, look, it's it's not as um, urban as, for example, like New York and places like that. Whenever we see places like that on TV, we're like, how can anybody stay there? It's so much concrete and steel, that's all you see. Yeah. So we are, um, what's nice about staying here is we're one of the biggest urban forests or jungles, whatever you want to call it in the world, so we've got so much so many trees and stuff growing around our even our cities themselves that it's you know it's really really nice yeah. but it's not that bad i mean we actually do stay very close to location which is um they used to call them squatter camps so that's what district nine looks like so we we stay quite close to one but we live a little bit further down and we stay in a, a nature estate so yeah. you know it's pretty removed from that whole kind of scene if i can call it like that <laughs> Because uh, I used to work with someone from South Africa, and yeah, she she would just tell us about uh, you know how security security is like super important, <laughs> and um, yes, like I guess yeah for for me it was sort of like oh my, that sounds why would you live there? But she was saying it, and it sounds really normal, and like it's not as scary. Like it's scary, but it's when you're there, like it, you know, it's just something that you deal with, and you. It's it's a process. You, I suppose, you become really desensitized to it. Um, for us, it's normal. You know, the yeah. the news you hear about everything that happens, it's normal. You kind of just brush it off because yeah. you can't also get fixated on it because you wouldn't be able to live. I don't think. Yeah. But um, for security, yeah, you've got to be. Some areas, like the the more far outlying areas in certain provinces, they're fine. But the closer you get to city centres, the more security becomes a bit of an issue because our crime rate is disgusting. <laughs> but, um, you know, we're pretty safe where we're staying at the moment. We've got, um, you know, fully fenced areas. They've got guards walking around with dogs and stuff. So, yeah. you know, it's a bit of a utopia in prison. <laughs> um, you have to go with someone who knew everything about, like, what to do. <laughs> yes. Look, the thing is, like I said, if, if you are staying and you have been staying here for a while, it's really just a matter of, it's just how it is, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, my brother also stays in Australia. He immigrated there quite a while ago, about 10 years ago now. And he also came to visit about a year ago. And he was so shocked because <laughs> he ended up, he flew to, um, uh, he stayed in Joburg in a hotel. But they had, um, I can't remember what it was, but they actually had a riot on the day that he arrived with his family. So he was so freaked out. And we were just telling him it's fine. Just avoid the actual main roads where the riot is. You'll be fine. But he freaked out completely. He's like, this wasn't the place I remember leaving because it was bad when he left. But, you know, I suppose yeah. it just steadily progresses and then all. Yeah. Degrees, yeah. I guess it's sort of happening. It's happening everywhere, like which is something that your books actually kind of yeah do, talk about and deal with. Um, yeah. So how how is things going with um your writing? Because you're working on a, a new project at the moment. Which is, yes. Um, I finished the first draft of the Seventh Fletch, which is a, a standalone novel, sci-fi novel. <laughs> Um, so I'm hoping to publish that in about two or three months' time. So I'm quite excited about it. It's much more um, light-hearted than Compile Quest and Debug Heroes and Execute Destiny because that was a bit, you know, dark and moody. <laughs> so this is more like, I don't know, frivolous if I can put it like that. I had a lot of fun writing it, so. <laughs> cool. And were you working on a horror project as well? Or... Yes, um, I was actually thinking about that the other day, you know, I actually started out writing horror and then when I got back into the writing scene because I'd been out of it for quite a few years, I don't know, life just happened, so, yeah. and then I got the idea for the Corrupted Sanskrit series and then I wrote that and ever since I've written that I've gotten so many more sci-fi ideas in my head that, you know, they've all started pushing out the horror 
ones. <laughs> but after after I've um, published the seventh glitch, I'll definitely write a horror because I've been wanting to write it for a while. So yeah, I think it will be the right time. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. I I can't wait to to read anything you write. I love that. I think. Yeah, I think you, you're well aware of how much I love the uh, Corrupted Sun <laughs> series. I pretty much talk about it all the time. I really want, like, everybody to read it. I super, I wish everyone would. Um, I just don't know that many people, so. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm exactly the same problem. Whenever they, like, tell you to, when you're starting out as an author, you've got to reach out to all your friends and family, and I'm like, that's like five people. Okay, I have a serious problem. I'm going to have to nail the social media thing big time. I mean, no, that's like exactly for us with the games. Like, you know, people are like, oh, you know, get all your friends and families to like test it. And we're like, well, we, we're just by ourselves. And kind of, we don't really, like, we do not hang out with people often. <laughs> we're really socially a little bit inept. So that advice sort of just doesn't work work for us. And we're trying to do the, the social media thing, but we're just, we're, it's, it's tough. I think it's, it's especially difficult for introverts. You know, I think um, I've met quite a few introverts, surprisingly, because that's almost like an oxymoron because you they never get out so how can you meet them but um, on social media I do and I think it's I think it's less intimidating to reach out to people on social media because it doesn't feel like you're standing in front of this complete stranger and talking to them, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's more like you're broadcasting to a number of faceless individuals and, you know, one or two of them start responding to you. And it's it's more gentle, you know. It's like I can't imagine myself going to, for example, like a party or something and trying to speak to people that I've never spoken to before because it doesn't work. I am such an introvert. I'll just sit in the corner and try and disappear into the woodwork, you know. <laughs> Try and wear the same colour as whatever couch I'm sitting on so that I don't get noticed. Yeah. <laughs> so, which is terrible for trying to publish yourself if you're an indie author or an indie game developer. Yeah. But <laughs> so yeah, yeah, social media I think is very, very important. Yeah, definitely. It's been a bit of an eye opener as to how important it really is and how active. I guess you you've really got to keep on it. It's so easy to just let it um, fall off. Yes. when you're trying to actually like make stuff so yeah it is quite time consuming um but yeah just, just like you mentioned going out to actual events and stuff like that is like we've got a couple coming up i think near this month or next month yeah sometime soon i don't know freaking out about it <laughs> and, like we yeah like me and Naz, we just hang out by all the free food and um, sort of stick to ourselves because everyone else seems like they all know each other and you know <laughs> you know, you, just, you don't want to like intrude on people and also what do you talk about and sometimes you you feel like you're, um, you're just sort of faffing or talking bollocks that doesn't yes. really mean anything and people will happily come up and do it to you like they'll talk their ass off about stuff and we just not, you know, go ahead with it. But when it comes to actually doing it yourself, you just think, oh, I sound like such a dick. <laughs> like I don't want to, no. I don't want to do it. But yeah, that, that's an, that's a, probably an entirely different talk altogether. Like how to, <laughs> how to not be an introvert. Maybe uh, we should we should collaborate on a manual on how to, how to become less introverted. You know. Mm. 